Place your cursor just outside of the update method, after the last right curly brace, and add a couple of new lines. Then type the following. Public Void Fire Cannonball Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly brace. All right, we've gotten it started. What exactly this method does is worth mentioning. At any point, we have at most three cannonball objects. They may be at any position with any velocity and may or may not have their live flag set to true. If the player presses A, and fires a cannonball, what should happen? We cannot create more than the three cannonballs we have. So what we should do is check each of the cannonballs, see if any have their alive flag set to false. And if so, we know we can use this dead cannonball as the new cannonball that will be fired by the player's cannon. We'll turn the alive flag on and set the position and velocity appropriately. So, the first thing to do is loop through the cannonballs and find a dead one. For each, open parenthesis, game object, ball, in, cannonballs, close parenthesis, open curly brace, if, open parenthesis, exclamation point, ball, dot alive, close parenthesis, open curly brace. This code will loop through all of the cannonballs and check if the cannonball is not alive. The exclamation point at the front of the if statement is a negation statement. So instead of checking whether the ball's alive flag is set to true, the conditional will be true if ball.alive is false. Below the curly brace, that's below the if statement, add the following. Ball dot alive equals true. Ball dot position equals cannon dot position minus ball dot center. So, we found a dead cannonball, we flip the alive switch to true, and set the position of the cannonball to the position of the cannon, which makes sense. When a cannonball is fired, it starts inside the cannon. But something is missing. We need to set the velocity of the cannonball, which determines what direction the cannonball will travel, and how fast it will go. Below the code you just added, Add this. Ball dot velocity equals new vector two. Open parenthesis. Open parenthesis. Float. Close parenthesis. Math dot cos. Open parenthesis. Canon dot rotation close parenthesis, comma, open parenthesis, float, close parenthesis, math, dot sign, open parenthesis, canon, dot rotation, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, times, 5.0f, semicolon, return, semicolon. This instruction sets the ball's velocity to a vector 2 that is defined by two mathematical functions, sine and cosine, of the rotation value of the cannon. This is a trigonometric trick that will get us a vector of length 1, pointing in the correct direction. We then scale it by 5 to make the cannonball go faster.
finally, we call return, which is a statement that causes the current method to exit. The reason to do this is because if we allowed the loop to continue, it might activate another cannonball. So once we activate one, the method is done. So we exit. Now, we're a few right curly braces short, so add them below the return call. One, two, three. Three right curly braces will close the if statement, the for each statement, and the method. We have the fire cannonball method complete. Let's add a few last details, and then we can draw the cannonballs on screen. If you're ready, head on to the next step.